Yay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Conversations for the Future. Today's topic is space garbage, recycling, and sustainability. My name is Lila Gislason. I'm the co-founder and chief of marketing for Foundation for the Future. Um, again, thank you all for joining us. Welcome for those of you who don't join us on a monthly basis. This is an event series that is inspiring conversations to advance space access for everyone. We talk about what it's going to take near term, near earth to move us closer to thriving in space. A little bit more about us at the foundation and why we created this event before I introduce the day. Our vision is truly space access for everyone, um, not just astronauts, not just billionaires. Um, and I know a lot of organizations um, have a similar vision. Um, I think the thing that makes us a little bit different is that um, we are a 501c3 education and advocacy nonprofit who is committed to two main initiatives. Um, the first of those is, well, we're the only nonpartisan organization advocating for financial tools that will make it easier to get capital for space infrastructure. And number two is we are committed to treating workforce as infrastructure and developing a thriving space workforce with both professional and blue collar jobs. Uh, we like to call it our kindergarten to orbit workforce development program. Um, that's kind of slang, but um, we also call it workforce for the future. That's our official name. So Again, we want space to be something for, for everyone. Um, so if you're young, you're old, if you're just intrigued by the idea of someday traveling to space or working in space or living in space, that's, that's what we're about. And um, we feel that the way to make space accessible to everyone is by accelerating the US's space infrastructure development. So how are we moving these two initiatives forward? One, um, well, through the Space Corporation Act, both of them actually. Um, it's a bill that we're currently working to pass through Congress. It advocates for long-term financial tools, including loan guarantees from the federal government for space companies building essential space infrastructure. And um, also we are doing so through, um, again, the workforce development program within the Space Corporation Act. and. We are excited to report that over 100 representatives and senators are in early support of the Space Corporation Act. It's promising, we've still got a long way to go, um, but it's it's moving forward and we're gaining traction and, and we're getting movement. So it's all good. And again, it's, it's thanks to all of you who, who dial in and who support us and who talk about the same things we're talking about. And um, so again, thank you. For for all of you, to all of you and to the other organizations who partnered with us. Uh, thank you to our donors and members who, are, who support us. We really can't do this important work without you. So thank you. Um, and I would now like to introduce our um, MC extraordinaire. Um, we're going, Lee Steinke. We're gonna talk a little bit about today's event. Um, we're going to look at the schedule and talk about what, what's in store. And then um, we'll also be speaking with Terry Trevino, who is a longtime um, participant in these events. And he's been a really important person for us because he's helped sponsor some of these events, which we really appreciate. Um, Lee, are you, are you ready and willing to jump in for a few minutes? Good morning. All right, great. Well, for those of you who don't know Lee, she is our event producer and host for Conversations for the Future. Uh, her and Michael Lane have been doing a great job um, curating these events and choosing the speakers and, you know, just keeping, keeping a, a great energy um, to the event. So thank you, Lee. Um, she is also a program management consultant and strategic advisor for Space Foundation's Center for Innovation and Education. She comes to us from the energy industry where she led science strategy and operations for large scale corporations. She holds degrees from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill 
Yale University and Wharton School of Business. Lee, how are you this morning? I'm great. Thank you so much. It's always a, an exciting time. This first morning, getting ready and reviewing all the, the bios and, and uh, you know, I love the the on-screen aspects of this job, as well as the behind the scenes. Um, and it's always great to be here with you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I had to ask, um, I, I know you you played a large part in sort of curating the whole event series. So Space Garbage, Recycling and Sustainability. Um, it's interesting because I think initially when we started having conversations around this, um, you know, I was thinking like, who, you know, who even thinks about that? I mean, it, it just seems like um, it would be an afterthought, but almost since then, and, you know, as I go about my life and interact with people and they ask me what I do and I talk about the foundation, just after the question of why would anyone go to space? We have enough problems here on earth. It's what about the space junk? What's going on there? And like, how are we going to, to deal with this? So really relevant, actually, um, not just to people in the industry, but people outside of the industry. And I think it's one of those things that helps make space sort of tangible. Like mm -hmm. we, we've got issues with sustainability here on earth. We have an opportunity to, to start fresh with, with a new, you know, a new palette <laughs> and, <laughs> How are we going to do that? So, yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear your story about that. You know, it's it's a fascinating 4D problem, um, and it, it you're right. It wasn't originally on our list of topics, and it may seem strange that a geologist would take off space mining and replace it with <laughs> this issue. But you, sometimes, you know, when you're looking at space infrastructure or any other big problem, sometimes you have to look at the other side of it, sort of the, the other side of the coin in order to get the full picture. And in a way, you know, space junk is something that we don't want in place, right? We're trying to get space infrastructure in place. And this is one of the hurdles really, uh, even though everything that's up there is there because of some advancement in the past. Um, and so, I thought it was a very relevant topic and we, we managed to fit it in. Um, but it's, um, it's amazing how quickly public awareness to your point has grown on that topic. Um, you know, I think Astroscale's efforts, a lot of podcast discussions, interviews, talks at conferences, and now it's such a big deal that there aren't just, you know, we're not just having a discussion about this today. There are two other conferences. So three conferences literally today that are focused on this issue. And you remember, you know, space movies, Michael Lane's pointing out, um, we've had space movies that have approached this problem, notably gravity, um, you know, recognizing that this is an issue and the effects that it could have on uh, space access and space infrastructure development. And so, um, you know, as, as somebody who works with 4D problems as a geoscientist looking into the subsurface, for me, there's that particular interest of taking that view and just looking up and having things swirling around and changing um, and placement in three-dimensional space um, you know, so it's a personal interest of mine, as well as something that's clearly gained huge relevance um, as part of the environmental and sustainability movement, as well as part of the space infrastructure conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did see um, Michael's comment in there. Well, and I think that um, that is um why we've started to create segments within conversations for the future, like um, Saturday Space, which focuses on entertainment and space, because as we know, those are the things that tend to lead, lead, lead those conversations within the mainstream culture. So yeah, there's cool. sort of a bridge from the technical people and the people who really know all the acronyms in the industry and the public. Yeah. Um, when, when there's a message that needs to be conveyed, 
you know, normally that's one of the ways, one of the best ways and quickest ways to get it into the consciousness of the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, um, you know, I think that's some of the feedback that we've heard about this event is that uh, people really appreciate how accessible it is, how you don't have to be very tech savvy to understand all of the the relevant things happening in space right now. Um, so that is true. we we love to have our our super technical speakers and i think there's a lot of value in having that perspective but some of our opening conversations with those people are hey you know say it in a way that a smart person who's not in the industry can follow um and so you know we see just a couple fewer acronyms fewer Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes a, a few fewer equations than we did in the first couple months. And, you know, that's really broadened our audience. Yeah, well, and um, I think there are so many people who are now getting interested in the space industry who are coming like you from other industries. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of our whole objective is we want to make it accessible and you have to start building the workforce somewhere. Um, without without people being interested in the topic and wanting to work in space, it's going to be really, really hard to build an industry. So that's what we're about. So tell us more about today and what we have on the schedule. And I don't know, maybe Leo, can we share the schedule from the website on the screen and we can maybe run through it? Is that helpful? Well, I'll just tell you, you know, I'm really excited to have more of a job back. He's obviously a major player in this space, thought leader, um, building taxonomy for this problem, um, taking it beyond, you know, he's standardizing the issues that have been disjointed and taken apart. And so really that sort of leadership uh, at the university level is something that this problem has really needed. And he's also a good public communicator, which is a nice, unusual com- com- you know, combination in an individual. Um, and so seeing him take this problem on from multiple angles um, is really, really exciting. So I'm excited to have uh, more about back. He's, he'll be our opening speaker today. Uh, And of course, every month now, you mentioned the special segments. We have a special segment called What's Going On, which is our current events segment. And Laura Forzik of Astrolytical heads that up every month. And it's just a whirlwind of information. Uh, Get get your uh, (laughs) wind sock on because uh, you'll get a lot of information blasted at you at a quick rate. Uh, and then we have a first timer, Austin Link of Starfish Space. He comes from big companies, but is now a co-founder in a brand new startup and, and making progress there. Uh, and then Gary Kalman of Cislunar Industries is returning to, um, to give us an update. He was on one of our very first conferences and then came back uh, several months later. And now he's, uh, you know, he had funding the second time. Now he's actually got some... Um, some testing going on in labs at at Colorado School of Mines. I'm very excited to to hear more about the updates on Cislunar Industries. Uh, We've got a big player in the FAA, Wayne Monteith, who's going to do an interview with Tim, our executive director. Um, And then we've got Space Money with Jeff Crusey of Seraphim. So um, sort of a new perspective. We haven't had anyone from Seraphim on before. Um, and he's bringing with him a uh, CEO from one of his um, portfolio companies, Deorbit. So I'm excited to hear uh, about their Desense tool uh, and how they're measuring um, where things are in space. Then we've got uh, Jeremy Grimmett of Rogue Space Systems, a new newer startup. And then to sort of the, the grandfather of all these startups, uh, Rob Hoyt of Tethers Unlimited, you know, he's been around for so long doing this important work Um, and he's got new uh, new programs since his last presentation here Um, new execution and tests so we're we're going to hear from him he's going to be in a parking lot on his phone and we'll show his slides so hopefully that'll all come together Um, and of course we had to have someone from astro scale Uh, toby harris will be here joining us uh, from their Um, European office, and then um, Scout Space, who's uh, the CEO has come in the past, and Sergio Gallucci will be joining us today. 
Um, and so we've just got, you know, a mix of entrepreneurial companies, old and new, who are innovating on this problem. And they're approaching it all from different angles. You know, you've got investors, regulators, analysts, academics, and entrepreneurs. Um, and so hopefully with all those different perspectives, we'll get a pretty good full picture of this discussion. Yeah, that's great. Um, do you want to just do a quick overview of tomorrow as well? Just high level. We don't have to look at the schedule. We can we can recap tomorrow, but um, yeah, so, so everyone knows today's it's not the end. We can parting tomorrow too. So join us tomorrow. It's such an honor to have George Neal joining us again. Uh, he's been on a few times in the past and always brings new perspective. He's going to cover a brand new topic. Uh, related to divisions of the military and how that can be approached. Um, and then Pete Gerritsen, uh, another major thought leader in the field, is going to join us, uh, as well as Chris Johnson, who's um, really bringing some insight on the legal side. So you'll get, you know, again, an FAA, retired FAA perspective, which can be a little different from FAA perspective, right? So more freedom to, to talk about um, and be creative with ideas, maybe. Um, and then, then a short panel with the three of them. Uh, and then our Saturday space segment, you mentioned Saturday space, uh, always excited to do that. Um, and Inara Tabir, of, um, she's a, a CEO of Galaxis Aerospace. Uh, she's now the chair of Gays in Space. Um, and she, she also has uh, radio shows on Spotify. Is that right? Yeah, um, yeah. She's, just, she's a mover, for sure. Yeah, just doing all kinds of things um, from her little home office in Germany. Um, and so very excited about tomorrow as well. Let me just grab. Oh, and then in the afternoon, David Chevron Chiv is here. Um, we have a neat segment where we're going to go back to habitats with our student spotlight. So we've got Madhu Thangavelu uh, talking about Moon Village to sort of introduce the topic. Then we'll have a group of student speakers to talk about a competition on habitat design, a series of competitions on habitat design, and talk about their efforts there. Um, and then Megan Crawford from Space Fund, who was one of the judges for those competitions, will talk about her role there and do a little bit more on space money. Excellent. Very exciting. Well, I, I think as many of you already know, we've been doing Zoom long enough, feel free at any time to ask questions in the chat. Um, I think we can we can raise hands as well. Um, I think right. most speakers will save a little bit of time for Q&A. Uh, we want this to be as conversational as possible. If you want to drop your, your LinkedIn contact information in the chat, that's cool as well. Um, yeah, we want this to be a, a place for connections. And I know it's it's been great for us as an organization. We've met so many people through these events. And so much happens behind the scenes after these events, too, where people are connecting and conversations are happening. And um, I, I would assume one of those conversations or a couple of them has happened with Terry Trevino, who, Terry, when did you, which event, we started in, in December. Did you come to our December event? I've been to everyone. Every single one. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, um, I, I, the, one of the most valuable thanks, thank you, Michael, everyone, really, um, uh, for having me. And uh, I can't tell you how valuable this has been over the, the almost year now. So really is impressive. And I'm really looking forward to a few of your people today and tomorrow. So it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Great. So you are getting your master's in, done. Oh, it's well, done. Yeah. Uh, pr presented my uh, thesis, defended the thesis. And now I'm, uh, uh, I'm not a graduate until December. But uh, I'm pretty sure that I, you know, unless anything happens between now and then, I'll, uh, I'll get out. And uh, so moving forward, looking for, I have so many little projects that I'm working on, like I'm working on something with Moriba. I'm working on, I really want to chase a little something for Michael. And uh, there's a lot of little things going on. I also am doing, you'll love this, um, 
I'm actually creating an algorithm for space debris through MATLAB, and we're actually writing the code. Um, I'm, I'm also a observatory manager. I manage a, a small 24 inch plane wave. If anybody knows any about this, very small telescope. Eh, it's not that small. And uh, oh my god, I'm so I'm so busy. And I still sell you property if you need any. In San Francisco. <laughs> yes, well, your real estate background uh, has has served the space industry well. Thank you. <laughs> it has actually. And you know what's funny? Uh, so previously, well, even before I was here in San Francisco, I was um, I was in uh, development, real estate development, building infrastructure. And what I think what really ticked the box for me, and what you and and uh, and your team were doing. Um, Tim's, it's a great idea of building an infrastructure, building a highway to space. You can't, it can't be replicated. It has to be done right. It has to be done the first time right. And I, someone said, well, what about all the problems down here on earth? And I went, well, you know, uh, we're maybe a few months, if not years away from losing your Facebook, losing your telephone. You won't be able to use it. We won't have the infrastructure down here to and, and all the repeaters that will be necessary to use your telephone, which means you won't have access to your bank. You won't be able to get gas. Uh, all the infrastructure that's down here, it's already transferred up. And we're one, I, you know, I'm not a fatalist, believe me. I'm, I think we can get around this uh, issue. And I know more of it is really into it. And Astria and, and what they've done is spectacular, uh, which is what I'm helping him with, by the way is helping him uh, locate and identify and see objects out there. Uh, but it's just, we're, we're, you know, what is, it's a Kessler syndrome. Don't want that to happen. Yeah. And, uh, but there, I could talk forever. Well, tell us a little bit about what is different about the algorithm that you're writing. What's new about it? Um, it's been done before, right? We're not reinventing the wheel. I'm just right. gonna, it's at the university level. So um, I'm now a graduate, considered a graduate researcher. So we're gonna take, we're gonna take that AI and we're gonna, we're literally going to teach our students how to do this very same thing um, in, in the MATLAB environment. And it is an AIAA sponsored um, uh, study. So they, they gave us, I don't know if anybody knows, MATLAB is so expensive. It is actually, I mean, one of the wonderful things about Python is it's free, but uh, MATLAB is so expensive, but it's it's really, really handy and so easy to transfer that knowledge to and from other MATLAB users. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. I, I just, you know. I used it way cheap. back when I did my master's degree in ge geophysics and geology. It's all 3D. You, you yeah. 3D and 4D, you called it. And that's what we're doing. We're building a, a 4D environment out and, and above the Carmen line. Yeah. Well, you've just immersed yourself and you've got fingers and everything in the industry. What was the very first thing you did when you decided you wanted to, to expand your reach into this industry? It's a tough question. I, I really noticed that our space domain awareness, our SSA was lacking. And not two months later, um, President Trump and, and those folks put together Space Force. And I went, oh my God, maybe we're actually going to focus on this cislunar environment. And that, that to me was kind of the impetus to move forward and to keep going and really stay focused and, and then the pandemic hit and more reason to stay focused yeah. uh, because I didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think that was it to me. I, um, you have some amazing speakers on today and tomorrow. I'm, and I'm going to be in and out constantly. So you're going to see me in and out, in and out because I'm delivering children all over the place. <laughs> But uh, I'm, I mean, this today is, is, is a really big event. You guys, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for what you two do and the behind the scenes fellas. And, you know, anyway, Michael, he's, 
he and I got a crack of dawn this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's early, early. <laughs> um, tell us, so you're driving kids around. Uh, you've got this amazing passion for space. Your wife is passionate about causes as well. You find a way to reinvent and to get educated in a way that you can contribute even more. What do you think that's doing for your kids today? Uh, ooh, that's kind of an emotional topic. They've seen me at my worst and, uh, and I had to reinvent myself. I think, <clears throat> you know, that's one of the things we all sometimes have to go through. We have to feel just the terrible stuff, right? And that really helped. So they've seen that, thankfully. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Terry, it's always a pleasure talking with you and just so glad to see you. It's, um, you know, you think about Cheers and everybody knows your name. This is one of those places that we want to feel that way and having, when we come on screen and we look at the list of names and we see some of these same people every time and then welcoming newcomers who are already putting, we've got brand new people putting things in the chat to recommend where people can look for more information. It's it's just a wonderful community. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful thing what you guys have done. It's built this amazing community and, and here comes one of the rock stars. Yeah, we got our rock star today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry and Lila. Thank you, Terry. Lovely conversation. Yes, thank you, Lee. Looking forward to a great event. Thanks all for joining us. Morabaja, welcome. How's it going? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for everyone on the line, Morabaja is an associate professor of aerospace engineering and engineering mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin, where he is the holder of the Mrs. Pearly Daschle Henderson Centennial Fellowship in Engineering. He's the Director for Computational Astronautical Sciences and Technologies, CAST, a group within the Odin Institute for Computational Engineering and Sciences, as well as the lead for the Space Security and Safety Program at the Robert Strauss Center for International Security and Law. Moraba came to UT Austin by way of the Air Force Research Laboratory and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory prior to and prior to that, where he was a spacecraft navigator on a handful of Mars missions. Moraba is a fellow of multiple organizations, including TED, American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, American Astronautical Society, International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety, Royal Astronomical Society, and the AFRL, the Air Force Research Laboratory. Moraba, thanks again for joining us. Can't wait to hear your comments today.